Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's Paul here from Midland Marauders and today we are doing uh, another painting tutorial video on quick and simple yellow armour, be it Imperial Fists or Lamenters or whatever chapter or even Legion you want to paint up. Uh, this is a super quick method to use. So um, for two of these methods I used uh, painting and dry brushing and then for one of them I used contrast and I have to say I am happiest with the actual with the contrast paint. Uh, it was the quickest and I was happiest with the results uh, that I achieved. So stick around and let me know what you think in the comment section. Okay, so I primed my marine uh, in Corex White and I'm starting off with the contrast one. So we're going to use iron and yellow for this. I've already given it a good shake and I am using a, sorry this is upside down, a medium shade brush to do this. So I uh, just make sure you give the contrast paint a really, really, really good shake. I've already done that before I started recording it. Just get some on your brush there. I uh, put some on the palette. You can use it straight from the pot either. I think the, the, the secret to this is to get lots on, get really good coverage with the, uh, with the contrast paint. Start on a, a section and work your way through that. I'm starting with the leg here. Uh, when you have the whole leg done, then move on to the other leg and so on and so on. Okay, so with the uh, iron and yellow applied, you can see it gives really good contrast. I'm coming along with Uriel Yellow. And these paints, I've had them ages and they've sort of dried up a little bit in the pot, so I just had to give them a bit of a stir and a good mix. I'm using the uh, the Army Painter dry brushes for this because I, I have no other dry brushes. I've tried makeup brushes, but they're just not the same. I really want to get my hands on the Artist Opus ones. So the, the, the key to dry brushing is as, as little paint on your brush as possible. And... What can happen with the contrast paint is you'll be left with some tide marks for where the paint is flowing and with the dry brush of the Uriel Yellow over that it will uh, help disguise the tide marks and just sort of bring it all together. So just on the raised parts of the armour uh, come along and give an all over dry brush of the Uriel Yellow um, and build it up over layers. Uh, don't go in there with hell for leather with one really thick layer or you'll just ruin the effect build that up all over the marine on the uh the raised areas and any anywhere that that you think the light will be hitting the uh the measure now with that done i'm coming along and i'm going to add some vampire fang to this uh again i am using a uh, uh, dry brush for this now this is like super sparing and you don't even have to do this this is a completely optional step if you want to leave it after the Uriel yellow you you totally can but i did it just to uh to pick out a few of the spots like maybe the top of the helmet just to give it that uh the knee the knee pads the greaves that we call them the greaves and uh, backs of the hands things like that uh really really prominent areas tops of the the pauldrons uh, totally optional, you don't have to do it. And with that uh, final dry brush of Vampire Fang added to the Marine, that is a contrast Imperial Fist painted up, ready to go. It is a really, really, really quick way of painting yellow. Um, I, I couldn't actually believe it myself. And I'm super happy with it. If I'm going with Imperial Fists, it's going to be that colour. Okay, so for the next marine here, I'm going to do something a little different for this. Again, Corax White I've used. Um, so we're going to give this an all-over uh, overbrush of uh, Everland Sunset. Uh, again, this paint has been sitting in my hobby room for years, literally, and never used. So come along and uh, work it into the palette. Give it a really... Uh, just a, you know, get into all the nooks and crannies. Don't be afraid of it. Uh, I didn't thin this paint, I just used it straight from the pot. Uh, I know it's heresy to say that, but uh, yeah, I just got stuck in there, bang it on, job done. Work your way around a minute, you're getting into all the little areas. I, I probably missed a few spots, any of you eagle-eyed viewers out there will, will see any spots I've missed. But We're going with the two-foot rule. If it looks good from two-foot, then it's good enough for me, unless it's like a main character. So work your way around and get it all covered. If you need a second coat, don't be afraid. Now with that done, 
I'm going to come along and I'm going to give it a wash of Agrax Earth Shade. Again, I'm going to give this uh, all over the uh, the mini. My shade brush, again, I've given it a good shake beforehand. Uh, Agrax Earth Shade is a sort of a, it's a great all-rounder. Um, so you can put it on your palette if you want, or just to even work it from the lid. Get some on there. And just work it into all the uh, the recesses. Sorry, I was a little off camera there. I had to move from my usual uh, painting setup and the seat I was sitting on was uh, not the best. And I was a bit low down and that's why this is a bit off camera at the minute. There we go. So just work around, get into all those nooks and crannies. Okay, so here's the marine with the dried Everland Sunset, or the dried Agrax Earth shade, I should say, I beg your pardon. And I'm going to put on more Everland Sunset, but this time I'm not going to use a brush. Instead, I'm going to use a sponge. So I have some of my palette here. I'm going to get it on my sponge and on a paper towel, wipe off some of that excess uh, Everland Sunset. And then you just want to sponge it on to the raised areas. And this is going to sort of start making the armor look uh, grimy, battle damaged, worn. Uh, sort of to give it the look of the cover of the, I believe it was the Sentinels of Terra uh, codex supplement that, that Games Workshop did for Imperial Fists. And that's just sort of the look that I'm hoping to achieve here. So just work your way around the mini and you can go as heavy or as light as you want with this. Now with that step done, we're going to come along and again we're going back to the Uriel Yellow. And we're going to do the very same for this again. We're going to use a bit of a little bit of foam used from an army, you know, a, like a pick and pluck army tray. And uh, get some Uriel Yellow on your sponge, wipe it off. And then you just want to come along and very lightly start sponging on to the raised areas again and this is going to build up the uh, I suppose the the less damaged areas away from the edges where you might have chapter symbols or iconography it's worth noting that if you're going to do this method of, of painting uh, your your marines you should really have your transfers on at this stage so that as you add your wear and tear you are adding it to the transfers as well as opposed to trying to do it afterwards which would just not be nice or productive at all I just work your way around picking out the little bits now i'm going to come along with some gorthor brown again i've given this a good shake and i'm going to get my sponge and i'm going to start to uh do this the very same as I would do it with the with the, the last two stages. Get some on the sponge there, dab it on my palette, wipe off the excess. You'll know by looking at it on the paper towel whether you've got too much on it or not, if it's just giving you a big brown stain. And we're just going to work our way around and uh, anywhere that you think it's going to be, the, the armor is going to be picking up wear and tear or shrapnel or battle damage or bullets, uh, you want to add this so around the uh, around the neck around the edge of the pauldrons uh, the top of the backpack uh, Anywhere really that you think uh, the marine is going to get Shot like a critical point on the armor that maybe someone is taking aim at uh, you want to aim it for there So now we've got the uh, the Gorthor Brown on. Uh, the final step that we're going to do is a uh, light, light sponging of bulk on metal. So we just want to come along and very sparingly, wherever we've put the Gorthor Brown, uh, we want to sponge some bulk on metal onto that area as well. So you're going. It's basically like a sponge version of an edge highlight and the final edge highlight where you're, you know, highlighting inside the, the previous layer. So just slowly work your way around. Again, less is more with this stage. So don't overdo it or it's just going to look like a silver marine that's got yellow on it as opposed to a yellow marine that's got some 
you know, silver armor coming through or grey armor or ceramide, whatever colour ceramide is. And after that step is done, as you can see, that Marine is finished. Ready to join the ranks of his brother. And I think he looks pretty, pretty nice. Okay, so for the final scheme in the video, I am going to take a Corex White Space Marine and I'm going to give it an all over wash of Agrax Earthshade straight off the bat. Because remember, this is about speed. We want to try and get as many Marines painted in as short a time as possible. So if we get the wash on at the very start, you could do it like even just before you went to bed, before you go to work. Having a cup of coffee before you go to work, throw on a bit of a wash. You come home, it's dry. Straight from the pot, not even using the palette. This is super slap dash method. Okay, so there's the Agrax Earth shit on. Now we're going to come along Everland Sunset again. We're going to do an overbrush on this. Overbrushing is very like dry brushing, except you're not taking off all of the paint. You're leaving some of it on the brush, but not enough that it's actually going to mask details. Just wipe some of it off on paper towel. After you've worked it into your bristles. I'm using like the biggest brush that I have. It's like a large base brush or extra large base brush. And I'm just going to come along and lightly brush it over all of the armor and what it's going to do is it's going to leave that brown in the recesses so you've already shaded your armor as you can see the fact that we're doing a thick over that it's an overbrush that the paint is not thinned so it's uh it's just covering everything really for this method do as heavy or as light as you want Okay, with the overbrush done, you can see it's looking pretty nice. So again, we're going to come along with our uh, Uriel Yellow, the go-to yellow for this. I don't even know if you can still get Uriel Yellow. It's the only one I had. Um, but it'll give you an idea. I'm coming along again with my Army Painter dry brush as well. Work it into the bristles, off on your paper towel, as much of it as you can. And we're going to come along and we're just going to lightly brush it over the whole armor. This is basically a slower version of the contrast method. Uh, I would still prefer the contrast method, but if you don't like using contrast paints or you don't have contrast paints, then this one will work just as fine. Okay guys, so here we have the uh, the three marines finished up here. Uh, as you can see, three really simple methods to paint Imperial Fist Armour. I have to say, my favourite one out of the whole lot is the uh, the contrast one. I didn't think I would like it, but I did. Uh, super quick, super simple, and uh, great results. So that is how to paint Imperial Fists in three different ways. Listen, guys, thanks so much for watching. Uh, let me know in the comment section if there's any chapters that you want to see me painted, uh, see me paint for the even with uh, the tenth edition coming out. And uh, I'll catch you all in the next one. Thanks, guys.